the interviewer is confused by reading your CV, then yeah. it would be it would make your life difficult in in the time of interview. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Tamu from Find a Job in Germany. And today here with me, our former coach, a good data scientist and machine learning engineer, Turzo. How are you, Turzo? I'm great. What about you? I'm also very good. Turzo, today we want to speak about a few things, mainly how can you stand out in the interview process as a data scientist? Why are a lot of data scientists who are applying for jobs in Germany are not getting calls? And What are the steps of the interview process? So what skills you need to bring to the table to land a job here? Before we do that, quickly introduce yourself, Turzo. <clears throat> right, thanks. Uh, I am Turzo. Uh, this is my nickname, obviously. So I am from Bangladesh. And yeah, this is my basic introduction. I came to Germany as a student. I studied in Germany. I, I have done my master's and then currently I'm doing my job as a data scientist uh, in Germany. Exactly. Very good. So you said you did your master's. About what year did you come to Germany? <clears throat> mm, it was the year of 2018. So I came in the summer semester 2018 as a student in Germany. And mm. then, uh, then I finished my master's here. Cool. And then you started working, right? So you... Um, You started working at um, some research institutions, first of all, right? Mm -hmm. And you worked for around uh, three to four years. Yeah. And then last year we met, um, you started the coaching program at Find a Job in Germany. Tell me, first of all, why did you decide that it, um, a bit of support for the job hunt is a good idea? <clears throat> yeah, this is the most important thing. Uh, like, you need to have a heads up like what might be hindering in your job hunt, because in, in the job hunt, it takes a while. It takes a lot of time. You have to be in front of computer, like uh, furnishing your CVs and so on. But the thing is the whole effort need not to go in vain because of that one needs to polish everything, know the right, uh, right, uh, right thing to do for the CV and the job hunt. Otherwise, a lot of time would be wasted. What was your main goal when you when you get in, got in touch with me? Well, like, what did you want to do? You already had a good job, um, also a well-paid job. What what was yeah. your main in intention? The main intention was to because uh, the previous job. I mean, the main intention was the job after the Corona pandemic. Things have changed. This is the mm. main thing. So previously, people used to see the CV manually, but mm. afterwards. Uh, after the corona, maybe due to lack of uh, employees and so on, they use this uh, uh, machine uh, readable things for the CV. So one needs to know what makes a CV a lot a lot different from the others. Otherwise, mm -hmm. people doesn't get calls. So this is the mm -hmm. first thing that mm -hmm. uh, made me interested that mm -hmm. I would get in touch with someone who can give me some insights what to add in the CV to get more points in the ATM machine. It's called ATM machine, by the way. Yeah. And why, why first of all, did you ATM want to, machine. why did you want to switch your jobs, first of all? Mm, because my previous job was like, I had a lot of commuting. This is the main problem. And I live in somewhere where it was very difficult to commute in that place. First of all, it was remote after the Corona and then it was one time and then they increased to three to four times per week. So mm. which was a little bit uh, like hectic. And some. also you, it was a research organization, if I understood right. And it you wanted was to research institute, but also they develop software. Mm. So it's like and you wanted to tra transition as well into um, a more industry focused um, yeah. company. Right? I right. wanted to get into production. Yeah, and did it? Did did you get successful? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I can just say we we met we met last year, beginning of last year, and it took you like around I think two months, and you landed a job with one of the biggest um, companies here in Germany, and and you actually now you told me you're working on a on a software right now, which literally everybody in Germany is using, and we talk about that more later on. Um, but congrats on that again. 
But coming back uh, to the question, like you already talked about the CV, how can you stand out? I mean, you're a quite experienced data um, scientist. You already had like four or five or even six years of hands-on work experience. Why was it still difficult for you, even having a work visa already, working in Germany, having work experience, why was it difficult for you to get the number of interviews or the right interviews? <clears throat> The thing is, first of all, my, I mean, honestly speaking, my CV was not precise enough. So this is the first thing. If you write too much on the CV without being uh, precise, then mm. it might, uh, might be like um, unuseful for the, or like you, you would get like points cut, nothing will happen. And mm. previously I was not using any kinds of like keyword based information in the CV, which can make your points a little bit better in this uh, CV. So mm -hmm. this was one of the main things. And also, like, in your CV, you have to specify some things like to stand mm -hmm. out uh, somehow from the other interviewers. So this mm -hmm. is the main. Thing. So uh, I mean, if I mean, who didn't do a job hunt for lo a long time, or maybe who is new to job hunt, it mm. might be very difficult for him. And my mm. previous jobs, in my previous jobs, it was pre-corona. So it mm. was not very difficult in that time. Like, mm. because people are not checking CVs via ATS machines and so on. So they mm. were manually checking and then get a very good overview of the whole pro whole candidate. So it mm. was not a problem. And then That's later it. on, mm. uh, it became a little bit difficult for someone who is job hunting. A lot mm. of my friends and colleagues also had the same issue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, we met, we did exactly that. We make, we made you help. We helped you to understand how to stand out, right? Or how to do a project description with it, which is to the mark, how to use the right keyword and so on and so forth. So what happens if you, if we, and uh, if you started applying with that new um, CV? With the new CV, if you apply, then at least you will get calls because uh, when I started applying, I still got calls from a lot of companies, as I told you, like I got calls from um, um, it was Porsche, I think MGH, uh, mm -hmm. it, um, MGH company from Porsche. And then I got also called from some other companies from Cologne and so on, said they, they was ready to give, give me uh, a contract already. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, if the first uh, impression goes well, then the next mm -hmm. impression also will be smooth in my idea. Mm, exactly. But if the interviewer is confused by reading your CV, then yeah. it would be it would make your life difficult in, in the time of interview. Yeah. So to answer the first question, how can you stand out? First of all, you need to understand what you're good at. And this needs to be reflected um, in yep. your CV. Then you get the right interviews for your skill set, literally. And um also, we answered, I guess, already the question, why no interviews? So if you're applying, you already said that if you're applying with a half good CV at the moment, you might get calls, but the number of calls is very little. And usually also the position you get calls for is yeah. not what you want in the end, right? Then tell us about the interview process. How is that going? Like, what do you remember? How, how was that with most of the company? Could you see a pattern there? Yeah. So in Germany, it's a little bit dif different than my own country. So uh, in Germany, uh, the interview process is multi-steps, like you get a multi-step uh, multi-step process for getting an, uh, going through an interview. Like for example, first you get a, a, a first you get uh, to know with the um, uh, with the person who first basically uh, check your CVs and so on. Basically, it should be a recruiter. Then if this everything goes well and recruiters gets a, uh, gets a kind of idea that your um, skills and experiences can suit very well uh, in the, I mean, with the goal with the, of the companies and so on. So this kind of stuff, uh, if it goes well, then you go to the next round, which will mm -hmm. be detailed round with the people whom will, you will be working with. Like for an example, it might be a technical round. Mm -hmm. Might be uh, it, it can be possible that it's a brief technical round, and then in the later rounds you go you go into the more details. But most of the companies have one technical round, which might be one or two hours long, mm -hmm. and then afterwards you uh, will go to some kind of 
uh, HR round where you talk with either HR or maybe um, uh, a manager of the company and so on. So this kind mm -hmm. of uh, things also uh, is there. And mm -hmm. afterwards, you get a final interview with definitely maybe an HR or the team lead where you discuss your salaries and so mm -hmm. on. And then if everything goes well, then you get your offer. So mm -hmm. I can say that roughly four or five steps might be there. Mm -hmm. And in those four or five steps, what would you say, what was the most challenging part for you? Okay, so the, like the full... Uh, steps were challenging where you have to think a lot and like if you want to answer anything you have to think before answering and also you have to reorganize your words and so on and the th thing is it in each step like for the first step in most of the companies the main challenging part was to give a brief overview about uh, your works and so on to the mm -hmm to the recruiter because recruiter is not a technical person. So yeah. in the first uh, interview, you would be dealing with some person who doesn't have that amount of detailed technical knowledge. So you have to mm. like talk in their language so that they mm. understand that you can uh, summarize yourself pretty well. Exactly. And then in the next round, in the tech round, the, the previous uh, kind of, um, the previous kind of, uh, uh, process would not work so you might need to go to a little bit more detailed but you need to be precise on technical level for an example if someone asks you about your uh, current uh, projects and so on then you have to answer them if, in a in a way that it's understandable for them because mm -hmm. it's possible that the person who is uh, interviewing you didn't even work with that technology but mm -hmm. somehow knows about that so you need to also think about that uh, in the back of your head so this is also important mm -hmm. and regarding some uh, um, uh, some questions like technical questions one needs to be a little bit uh, let's say uh, accurate or definitely one needs to be accurate about the answer and uh, definitely if things uh, go well in the second round then you go to talk with the HR so, mm. or team leads or the managers and so on. Yeah. So then you have to also talk, talk about the business side of different mm. type of project that they have. So you need to a little bit do a research about the company that you are mm. applying in that level. So uh, everything will go well in, in that regard. Do you remember the mock interviews we did, the training interviews as well? Yeah, the mock interviews were nice because like uh, it summarizes the whole thing really well and what you might expect uh, regarding a particular interview process. So this eases your nervousness. So one, once a person gives an interview, if he or she knows uh, his weakness of a strong... Um, uh, like strong personalities beforehand, then he would be confident in the interview. So this is a main thing of the Again. interview. It, and it helps a lot. As well, they're the same logic as in the CV. You need to understand why are you a good match to that position? Yeah, what are yep. your what are your strengths there? And maybe also why you are maybe not. What are your weaknesses in regards to that position? If you're aware of that, you can prepare how to overcome that, right? And then how to answer also to critical questions. And um, yeah, anything else you maybe, do you remember an example of a technical question maybe which was discussed mm -hmm. in, your, in, in one of the interviews you had in any company? So in most of the cases, what you have to do uh, with the companies, you have to talk about your previous process, uh, process mm -hmm. or previous, sorry, not the process, previous uh, projects. Mm -hmm. So this helps a lot and you need to also know, know about the goals of the projects and so on. So what this project is supposed to do and then uh, what do you want to do with that projects and so on and mm. know each and every detail technical things because question might come from anywhere from that project. So most mm. of the company do, does that uh, to align their uh, own projects with the skill set of the uh, in interviewer, interviewee. So. Mm. Uh, this is the main important thing. And the next thing uh, is like, there are um, 
obviously uh, times where people has to answer um, like different kinds of technical questions from that project or they can get back, go, go, go back to your CV and see some technologies and if they remember anything specific about that, maybe they will ask. So one of the most uh, commonly asked question is like how back propagation works in deep learning. So this is mm -hmm. one of the question for a data scientist, which might be asked uh, from a random interviewer. So another question might be what is the true positive rate and false positive rates, these kind of basic things for mm -hmm. uh, for evaluations and so on. So these so are some things. You need to be good in your fundamentals there as well. Definitely, fundamental definitely. Exactly. You need to awesome. brush up your fundamentals, look in the internet. And also you had uh, a lot of uh, like uh, question for question bank for the data scientists. So mm -hmm. I also saw them. So this mm -hmm. will also help uh, in different regards. Okay, awesome. Uh, Tuzo, we're going to do um, a second part of that interview. In the second part, we want to talk more about what exact skill set do you need to bring to the table to work in Germany. Also, we're going to talk about what is the work culture like in Germany, yeah, and also how is work-life balance. For that part, um, I say thank you already. I think you gave us a good insights about how the interview process works, what is important, first of all, to get calls, and that really helped. Many thanks for that. You're welcome. Thank you. If you're also working tech and IT, you want to maybe switch your job in Germany or you want to move to Germany, relocate here, watch our 20 minutes video training, which you find below this video and book a get to know call with us. We're going to assess your profile. And if you have good chances to find a job in Germany, we're going to work with you. Then it usually takes two or three months, two to three months for you to get an offer as well. See you soon. Bye bye. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>